Hey there. Good afternoon and evening, everyone. That's a spade today. Welcome to... Hump Day. It's Hump Day. It is Hump Day, August 21st, 2024. We'll be ready, but... Come here. It's, uh... Well... It's... Day 234. To you know, we are actually making some really good progress with this staying sober stuff. Although this position right here must be really compromising. Not really. I have no idea. I'm just kind of... I'm kind of... Nah, I want to say I'm out of it. Or bored. Maybe... Maybe a little both. Oh, I'm feeling the weird right now. Oh, or the... Um, yeah, the humidity in our house is up. It's so hot. It's probably like trying to cool down outside. It's... Uh, about 104 today. We'll say like 102 or 104 today. I'll do a double check on that one. But... With that tiny, tiny little bit, it makes all the difference. So... I... Can get... Even somewhat more comfy. I don't know how comfy I can get, because... Well, I still have the AC running like crazy in this house. Ceiling fan is trying to blow the cool air down. I did have the ceiling fan off thinking, Hey, I don't want to hit my hands in a ceiling fan. Yeah, that, that was uh, very quickly a bad idea because it heated up even faster. So, ceiling fan's back on now. No figure. But, uh, uh, just that little bit. Getting onto my on the on the parts of my head that aren't covered in a VR headset, and on my definitely on my ears, it feels so much better. <sighs> but it is just myself and Tara today, because Lilia and Sweetie are over at Lilia's mother's house, so the, they're visiting the grandparents today. But we're now that Buttercup is this. <sighs> I am out of breath. I'm sorry. My chest kind of hurts right now. The asthma and humidity for me don't do really well. And that cat has definitely been trying to stay on our front porch. Because it smells of cats. It's not our cat. But, as I was saying, now that Buttercup is back in school, they're hoping, we're hoping that Sweet D and Lily can go over to the grandparents at least once a week to visit, get out of the house kind of thing, because... Well, you gotta get out of the house once in a while. You can't just, you know, stay here all the time. He what they call cabin fever. Um, it is very true that... that... Uh, it's very true that Buttercup, Sweet Pea, and Lily have been getting that cabin fever thing over the summer vacation. Now that summer vacation's over, Buttercup is in school, so they can go over there and get out of the house. Take care of that cabin fever kind of thing. Yeah. That's what I was trying to say, and my brain just wasn't there because, well, I did have some nice ice cold, um, I guess frappuccino. I, would, I had I had a liter of it, but I did have a really good frappuccino. The unfortunate thing is that it did the exact opposite. I ha I have that problem where it's for me it's hit or miss. Sometimes it'll work and you know make me feel snipper and a weight and stuff. And then the other half of the time it knocks me out and makes me want to go to bed. And today is one of those days where I, where it makes me just want to go to bed. But I don't want to go to bed. I want to get this done. It is 234 days in. This whole sobriety challenge has gone exceedingly well. Minus the finances as well. I don't know. I personally do not know anyone who's not struggling. So, everyone I know is all struggling right now. We're we're definitely struggling, but who isn't? Ugh. I also keep stepping outside of that. I keep stepping on my VR cord, and it's quite obnoxious. I'm trying to not step on the VR table. Because uh, those aren't exactly the easiest things to replace, you know? Yeah, but... Oh, no, no. I feel- I just feel like I have a lot of problems going on. Ah! There were more- there was more. I did. I do have something I can talk about. Eh, kinda. It's more of a- it's more of a sweet pea thing. 
We already covered that. Um, she knows how to bypass the the actual lock system on the day on those baby gates. There's another lock on them, so she knows how to push the button to open it, and now she knows how to undo the locks at the bottom to get through the gate. So we have to barricade them. That's why Tara said, well, I think Tara's right. I think he's right. It would take her a week to figure out a child safety lock on a cupboard when you put those, when we install those. That is one, that is one determined child, I tell you what. There's just... There isn't a whole lot we can do about that. It's... Once she's figured something out and she decides that she wants to do something, there is no stopping her. She's going to do it. And she will find a way, and she's all edged so far. She has constantly found a way. We, uh, get you a little closer here. But, let's see. Um... Well, there, there, like, uh, 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 I'm tongue-tied again. I need to stop being tongue-tied and, and not grab this camera by accident. But, um, there was a small incident over at the grandparents' house today. Uh, Lilia sent Tara a text that Sweet Pea randomly looked at her uncle and just said that he was boring. Sweet Pea, you're, you're not even three years old yet, and you're calling people boring? So then she goes up to her grandmother, points at her, yells at her, you're old. Well, we already know her grandmother's old. Especially for her. They, um... A grandmother that only has two grandkids. Two grandkids, I should say. Being, you know, Buttercup and Sweet Pea. But uh, they were already... When I, when I met my in-laws, they were already pretty old, but that's the whole thing where Lilia was adopted, and she's the eldest. So that, you know, goes into explaining quite a bit because how the adoption system works in the United States. It sucks. It could be worse, because it could be the foster system. We know how bad that one could be. Don't need to get into that, it's a whole different thing. But yeah, she just ran around t telling her aunt, her uncle and her grandmother, that they were boring at all. Who's been teaching Sweet Pea this? I haven't. We try to be good role models. Well, you know, best we can. As best we can. But... I, I they, they got a good laugh at it, so... Out of it, so it's not like she got in trouble or anything. But it's still one of those like, Yeah, we were gonna have to... We're gonna have to be careful about that one. Because... I don't want it to bite us in the ball. It'll bite us. It's, it'll bite us in the butt when she starts uh, pre-K. But out here in Oklahoma, yes, we're Okies. We're boomer sooners. We're we're sooners. Um. So because we're sooners, even though her birthday is in September, they have a zero tolerance policy in Oklahoma about. Children starting school early, even if they, they have to be of the proper age before they start school. It can't be even like day after school starts. It has to be before. So she can't go next year when she's four for pre-K because she will be four years old after they've started school because, you know, her birthday is mid-September. Look, he's not going to be able to start free pay until he's almost five years old, just like her sister did. It's it's an unfortunate thing, but that is a whole story about the uh, the um the idea of uh, schools and just systems in general having what they call zero tolerance. Zero tolerance uh, usually does more harm than good. I can say. But that does mean she still has two years before. She still has about two years before worrying about pre-K. So she's with us, so hopefully by then, she will learn to mind her toe and not mouth off so much. So that's going to be a tough one because I know she's got our personality. She's got Tara in my personality. Probably more Tara than mine because I try to be mindful. And Tara, Tara is definitely a... um. He doesn't like to wait and rely on other people when he knows he can get something done. 
he doesn't like like he definitely hates waiting on people so if he has to wait on people he'll try to get it done himself and he does i mean where i was getting so and we did confirm we did confirm sweet bean sweet pea is, well she she's left-handed like we are so, yes, we, we are going to be the ones to teach her to write and do, you know, all the hand-eye coordination stuff, all the, all the skill sets. That, that, that gets to be our pleasure of doing. Lightest instruments, of course, because, well, I'm horribly tired. I don't know how to play any instruments whatsoever. But then it also partially equate to everyone that tried to teach us anything were all right-handed. Even in school, we only knew right-handed people. Especially the teachers who did, like, you know, the arts. They were all right-handed, and they could not help us whatsoever, so... And we grew up in a family who all played guitar. Like, Tara's father plays guitar. I think his grandfather did. His brother played guitar. His... Tara's niece plays bass guitar. His stepsister also plays guitar and bass guitar. So they all played, they all play strings. Like, so many in terms that would play guitar of some kind. And I, I, we do know that when Tara's younger sister, biological sister, but younger sister was in junior high, she played the clarinet. Tara didn't get the opportunity to do any instruments because the one he originally wanted to do were the drums. And his father at the time said, no, you are not doing the drums, those are allowed and obnoxious. And now his dad's in a band. Yes, Tara's father does have his own band. He's, uh, he's a, um, he's a country music musician in California. Yeah, he's, he's got musicians in his family. And Tara's just, um, well, Tara's just Tara. He does his thing. There is one instrument that over the past... Jeez, I want to say, like, ten? Ten, yeah, about ten years? He's wanted to play the violin. But it is really... Here's the problem about being left-handed. Finding a left-handed violin... First starters is difficult because the availability is low. And there's a low availability for left-handed violins. And when you do find them, even her manufacturer, they charge at... Usually at minimum. Double the price of a regular violin to get a left-handed violin. That is the problem. That is the problem with being left-handed. Your musical instruments and your tools and your sporting equipment that require me, you know, left-handed, do left-hand dominance, they all cost more. Um, baseball gloves cost us, uh, cost Tara more as a kid. His golf gloves, when he was a kid, were definitely, definitely, like, more than double the price of regular golf clubs. They charged so much for left-handed golf clubs. And he, he only did, he, did he book golf lessons in junior high. And then Tara, after his first round of actually being on a golf course beyond just the driving range, he said he would never golf again. Because his very first hole, he killed a bird. With his golf ball. He sliced into a tree and the first thing the golf ball hit was a crow's head. He will never golf again. But out, out of that, it's it's been an unfortunate reality that... Being left-handed is just more expensive. You learn to make do, and that's I, I guess that's why a lot of left-handed musicians in the past just I literally learned how to play with their right hand. Or what was what was who was it? Was it was it Jimi Hendrix that just flipped his guitar upside down? I want to say it was Hendrix. I could be wrong. So if I'm wrong, you can correct me in the comment section down below that it was not Jimi Hendrix. But I want to say it was Jimi Hendrix that just flipped the regular guitar upside down so he could play left-handed. Which I guess for him worked. But... <sighs> we... we all... well... we also have a different issue with our... with our fingers with my guitar. But... overall the difficulty is just finding instruments that aren't too expensive. 
in one day we'd like to see the big price and difficulty of finding left-handed musical instruments and in your sporting goods the availability go up and the price going down but obviously on that e in an economic standpoint it makes sense that left-handed equipment costs more and the reason again is because you have it's a special it's it's a special item which means you're already manufacturing something that has a demand and knowing that the the number of people who are left-handed in society is barely five percent so if five percent are left-handed you have to think of all that five percent of people approximately five percent of people how many of those people are going to need or even what the tool that the tool instrument or whatever that you're trying to sell like it got easier with left-handed scissors because it started becoming a requirement to have them available in schools. But even then, you do not see left-handed scissors very often in stores because lower availability. They don't need to make as many of them because not as many people need them. It becomes a vicious cycle. And in order to make a decent profit margin, say if you're making guitars, I'm, I'm gonna go to that because remember, Tanara's family, they're all musicians kind of thing, so it, it, it's an easy one to relate to on why they're so much more expensive. If you're already making a, a ton of guitars, say like a, a Fender Telecaster, and you make a bunch of Fender Telecasters, but someone comes to you who's left hand is like, I want a left handed Fender Telecaster. Well, suddenly that's the one person who's come to you asking for one. That's a special order. Because your own, your, all of your equipment is geared for regular Fender Telecasters. Which means you need special equipment, special time set aside. And on top of that, in order to really make a return on profits on keep, and when it comes to keeping your cost or your prices low in order for your market availability to remain higher. And that, that's, that's a huge reason why certain things cost less is if enough of them are being sold. And that means back when we were, I want to say a freshman in high school, there was, it was not the, the tele, it wasn't the Telecaster, it was the cheaper Fender Stratocaster. Well, like the cheapest ones that we were able to find were about $130. This was back in 2004, 2003, 2004 is when we saw those prices. So it's been a while. It's been like, it, it's been like 20 years. So obviously the prices are up for a multitude of reasons. But at that time, whenever we tried to find a left-handed, it was between $220 and $350 for a Fender Stel uh, Stratocaster. I almost said Stella. <laughs> Sorry. But yeah, so they're, they're more expensive. And the big reason why is because you can't you're not going to be able to make as many of them. Nowhere near the degree, the, nowhere near the number you're making for regular Stratocasters or any other, or like a Gibson Left Hall. You're not going to make as many for left-handed people because your market with left-handed people, one, is no guarantee. And two, of, the, of those left-handed people, who want, uh, who would want that specific, not all kind of thing. Obviously, they would want, want, they'll want to go with what's, you know, in, in many cases, especially starting out, you want what's affordable. But that does mean you have a smaller market pool, which means you're not going to be able to start creating surpluses of them because the sur surplus product of that being a left-handed product is going to sit on the shelves longer, and the longer it sits on the shelves, the more it costs money for it to stay on the shelves. Which means you have to have your braces up instead of lower like a regular right-handed product in order to offset the cost of having manufactured it. It's the same kind of thing with, um... Anyways. Like, if we're, we're just... Regular mouse very computer, especially MMO mouse. So we use a Corsair Scimitar. By the way, 
If you want an MMO mouse, get a Corsair Scimitar. The size is perfect, you can adjust the side, please. Great mouse, love it. But, you'll notice, they do not make any for left-handed. And a lot of that, again, also because of the same thing. They'd have to wonder about how much of their market is left-handed and how many of that left-handed game, you know, computer gaming market is willing to dish out the money to buy that product. And because it uses so much more electrical engineering and they've never made the product, you're looking at minimum triple the cost for a left-handed version of that same product. And then, let's not forget using a computer is so incredibly rudimentary that we stopped letting our mouse be left-handed. You know, the back, back in the old days of computers, they, even now you can still make your mouse uh, usable with the left hand. It's just really uncomfortable because the ergonomic design of computer mice are designed for right-handed. Because making it or making a left-handed again costs more. But your standard mouse that had the same shape overall in the older days, like the old uh, ball and bracket. Or a track and ball mouse? Not not the not the top one, but the you know, the underside where the ball was under there. Uh I guess I, I think it was a track ball. Where your your old standard mouse had a very standard shape, so you could switch the keys to be left handed. But that meant only your computer was set to left handed. And when you're in school learning to use a computer, you have to learn right handed. Because if you try to set the mouse to be left-handed, one, you need administrator you privileges. And a lot of teachers all still didn't have administrator privileges, and even if they did, that meant every time you got on the computer, they would have to stop what they're doing in order to go into the computer settings, go into, uh... Device Manager. Or even your old control panel. And set the mouse up for left handed, and then as soon as you're done with your lessons for the day, they'd have to switch it back to right handed. That's way too much work for a standard class, or. So, really, we just got used to using it right handed, and. There are certain things that we do right handed, but they're a necessity. Like using a mouse, um. Well, mostly using a mouse is all on the right hand because it's all knuckle memory at this point. And that's why when they finally gave left-handed controls for things like Skyrim VR and Fallout VR. And for a short time, I want to say Half-Life Alex did this, where they have... They, they have left-handed controls. But they're terrible. Because they got all left-handed. See, when we made left-handed controls, we want our... our uh, let, let's use Skyrim VR as the example. You want your... I just pulled out of menu, but you want your sword on your left hand because you fight with your left hand if you're left-handed. Well, they thought, oh, these people are left-handed, they were left-handed controls. Let's mirror the directional controls, too. So now instead of moving around using your left thumb, you're moving around using your right thumb. It's terrible because it met with your muckle memory, and then if you play long enough and finally get used to doing that, and then you pick up a regular rule, like Xbox, PlayStation, and Nintendo controller to play like Animal Crossing or Halo. All of a sudden you realize, oh hey, I need to go back to using my left thumb for directional controls. It's not fun. And I've asked multiple times, if we have left hand dominance, could you at least leave the directional controls on the left hand for pure muscle memory? No response whatsoever. And I guess the easiest thing to say with with, you know, like, gaming is... I, 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 my, my best guess is engineering time. Like, to make the, the left-handed controls took time and energy was something that these people have no experience with. And I, and, and I, and I say that from a simple standpoint of most people in the gaming industry as developers are also right-handed because, again, left-handed people only 5% of the population, although there's a high degree of left-handed people in the arts. I don't know why, but, but there are. But still, everything is beard for your primary your primary consumers. So even, des I mean, we're lucky enough we even got left-handed controls and things like Skyrim VR. Very lucky. But then to asking them to go back in and re-engineer because all they did was mirror all controls. 
in order for it to work as a left-handed control. But you're asking them to go back and reprogram for the standard directional controls, but to also program in your character model's dominant hand as well. Which is a ton of work. I, I, I can't even fathom how much work that would be. Now let's also talk about like MMOs or any other game. Like FPS games are a good example. The first thing you'd think is like, hey, I'd like to have my character be left-handed. Believe me, I would love my characters to be left-handed in MMOs and FPS games. I would, I would be ecstatic if I could have a left-handed option. The thing is, though, if they finally manage to do something like that, the likelihood is they're going to mirror all the all the directional and fire controls, which means it's going to mess with the muscle memory. Lord, I just want at least the aesthetic, because I want to say, if I'm going to be swinging around a magic rod and throw Zonday bolts or something, and I'm saying that because PSO 2, but if I'm going to be spamming Zonday and I feel like I want to swing my own arm around, which you're not going to do because it's not here. But anyway, the same idea, I want it in my left hand. And I think mean, Yuko Creed did something I really didn't expect with their idle animations, or, you know, they have like, um... Like, uh, animation poses you can do. Movement and idle animations, and they made rehearsed versions. So, my idle animation in PSO2 New Genesis is floating T, uh, floating T time reverse. So, I'm holding the T up in my left hand, which is what I absolutely love. So, I made sure I have some reverse animations to where I'm even holding weapons in my left hand, or at least the idle animation. I saw that and now my hopes are up that eventually they'll let my character be left in in general. But I know it, it's a really t it's a really, really tall ass. It's it's like, way what I almost put my hand in the ceiling, fan. I need to be more careful, but it is a really tall ass. And I understand. I mean, because... It is much more difficult on an, on just purely an engineering and coding aspect to add in left hand dominance as a function, like even as a function. Definitely as a function, I'd say. I mean, and, and again, that's why Skyrim VR's controls for left handed users are completely mirrored because that was the easiest way they could. That was the easiest way they could program in left-handed controls, was to mirror them. I mean, you see the exact same thing with, uh, cause, uh, Twilight Princess. The uh, Legend of Zelda Twilight Princess originally came out on the GameCube. Now, before, before the Nintendo Wii, Link was a lefty. Link was left-handed. But... When they started putting The Legend of Zelda onto the Nintendo Wii, or, uh, uh, you know, the second version of Twilight Princess and to do, uh, Skyward Sword, they switched Link to being right-handed to make it more relatable for the right-handed players because they wanted use of the, the Wiimote. Which meant all of the movement controls, well, all the movement controls did stay the same, so everyone was using the right hand. But they wanted the, they wanted Link to reflect that, so it would be relatable and not so confusing for the average player. So Link originally, even in Twilight Princess game, he was left-handed. It slipped over to the to the Wii, becomes a standard right-handed character again, or not again, becomes a right-handed character. And since then, all of the 3D Legend of Zelda games, Link has been right-handed. But if you look in things like uh, the, uh, the remake of Link's Awakening, um, I, the new game where you're playing as Princess Zelda instead of Link, which honestly I'm pretty excited to try out, if you look at Link in all of the top-down games, or you know, a third-person top-down, all of those games, Link is still left-handed. But ever since the, the mainline three games, like, Twilight Princess, Skyward Sword, Breath of the Wild, and Tears of the Kingdom, Link has been right-handed because it's easier to relate to the standard audience where there are some moving controls that can be used. It's geared for the left-handed audience because on an engineering standpoint, it is so much easier to just do it that way. 
It is so much easier. I, I can't even fathom, like I said, I can't even fathom the, the, the amount of headache it would be to program, to properly program in left-handed use without mirroring controls for VR or in like an MMO or, an, or a multiplayer FPS game. Being able to program in whether or not you want your character to be right or left-handed, it would be absolutely amazing because it would add a whole new level of character interaction immersion where you see the teams and well, someone standing out using a southpaw, which in some sports being a southpaw is a really, really good thing, and it still is. But again, it's difficult to do. And that's probably why through history of left-handed people were shunned. Because on a pure learning basis, it's harder to teach a lefty. <laughs> like, especially writing. Our handwriting, our handwriting is terrible. Believe me, it is absolutely awful. So hopefully because we are lefties, Sweet Pea's gonna have an easier time learning to, to write as she gets older because she'll have someone there to help her out. She's still gonna have to get used to the idea of getting all that pencil graphite. I don't like calling it, I don't like calling it pencil lead because it's not lead, it's graphite. She's gonna have to get used to the pencil graphite just being smeared all over the, the side of her hand be, and having all of her notebook rings completely smushed. She'll have to get used to that one because uh, that's been the story of our entire life. Pretty fun though. I mean, I, I have zero uh, We are who we are. But yeah, that was a long rant. I was a Tara was the one who originally wanted to go on a really, really long rant about the engineering difficulties of being left-handed. And, um... Yeah, he had some rather harsh things to say about the entertainment industry, gaming in particular. Where... All of all of this talk and all the logic we gave is why he thinks the uh Oh well we'll we'll, we'll um we'll, we'll leave it there because that gets into a, a uh, less friendly and informative topic and more frustration and no one and everyone walking away upset, so we'll we'll, we'll leave that one at there. And we can do whatever else. But I apologize. This... It, it's... It's been a day. I definitely... I'm, I'm just glad I had a few more things I could talk about. I'm wondering what other shenanigans Sweet Pea has done over at her grandparents' house. And, uh... I, uh oh, I did get some messages. Let me see if Lily has said anything. I'm gonna check my phone real quick. It's in my pocket. Hang on. Let's see... She did not message me, which means her phone is probably charging. Okay. I know, I, I do know that Lilia pretty much did uh, just completely kill her battery while over there because she was, well, she was playing, uh, Home Has Star Rail a lot today. Probably maybe did some Genshin Impact, but she probably did her own, her, her own fair, fair character AI. But she did learn the importance of keeping more of that to herself. Especially since Sweet Pea loves to repeat things. Sweet Pea now is very, very aware of who Scaramooch is, or that guy. Lily thinks that she only mentioned it once and that's all it took for Sweet Pea. That's on the Scaramooch part? Yes. On the hat guy part? No, you say quite a lot, Lilia. Well, well, you have your days where you really talk about hat guy. But anyway, that's enough rambling, because, wow, that's actually a really good time right now. Or 11 p.m. Not bad. Not bad at all. That's pretty good. So I'd, I'd say I did pretty well today. But I do want to, I, I do hope everyone else here has enjoyed. <laughs> I'm a little, hey, excuse me, my, uh, tracker on my phone seems to have twisted over. But as I was saying, I do hope everyone here has enjoyed their hump day, which is still 
It's still August 21st, 2024. It's, it's, it's still good. I hope you have enjoyed it, though. Absolutely. Did you, did you enjoy your hump day? Yeah. I just took a picture. That's not what I meant to do. But this is, that's a, <laughs> oh, jeez, I'm, I feel silly right now, okay? But then just had this fade on your hump day. Hump day, August 21st, 2024. And it is day, again, it is day 234. We will see you all tomorrow on Thursday. But remember, tomorrow is Tara's day. So, you'll get him tomorrow, which should, should be interesting. Hopefully his, his version of one of the alternate avatars we have is ready to go for tomorrow, but he'll talk about the other things he, he wants to be doing. But in the meantime, enjoy the rest of your evening. We'll see you tomorrow, everyone.